Hurken ook het trap sans 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 UFC 235, that was insane. One of the best events I've ever been to. Just just craziness uh, between Ben Askren coming back. Really happy for him. That guy's heart is unbelievable to, you know, Anthony Smith. That, that, was, that was rough. I wanted Anthony to win, obviously, to beat John Jones. And uh, he did good. He didn't do as good as he wanted to, but you know, he's got the heart of a lion. That's why they call him Lionheart. And uh, all the way from Diego Sanchez beating Mickey Gall, that was... Diego turned back the clock. Uh, good for Diego, but Mickey will be back. Mickey's a champion as well. But listen, I'm away out of the country all week. So I wanted to do some of my favorite interviews all week for you guys and do a best of. Uh, today we're going to do best of Colby Covington. I'm going to play his interviews from back from three, four years ago when he first came on the podcast to, to now. Uh, congrats to Colby, by the way, on getting the next title shot. I want to thank our sponsor, Speedweed. Listen. Marijuana is legal in California. You can get it delivered to you. Okay, don't leave your house. Get it delivered. Go to speedweed.com at speedweed.com. They have marijuana, they have edibles, they have THC sex lube, they have marijuana, you know, breath mints, they have anything you name you could think of, they have it and they will deliver it right to your door. So go to speedweed.com, check them out. This guy Gino, he's a great guy. Mention MMA Roasted, you get $10 off. Orders $100 or more. Also, Santa Cruz Medicinals. Okay, they are unbelievable. They have the best CBD stuff you can find. Uh, It's awesome what they have. I'm telling you, these guys know what they have. They have potent CBD infused coconut oil, olive oil, MCT oil, vape pens, and more. It's gluten free. Vegan, paleo, and sugar-free. It's lab tested. Go to scmedicinals.com. Mention roast, dude. Get five dollars off. Um, but now let's uh, let's hear some of my best interviews I, I've done, starting with Colby Covington from back in the day when he was a seven zero, a seven and zero fighter to all the way to now. Let's take it away. Hope you guys enjoy. Thank you guys so much. Take care. Speaking of which, uh, our First, our, our next guest, which we're going to talk to, and then, and then it's us, so don't, don't think I'm getting away, uh, is this guy Colby Covington, who is 7-0 and in the UFC. This guy is the next big thing. I, I'm calling it here. I, I told Dana White three years ago, I ran into him in Vegas. I said, Chris Weidman is going to be the next champion. Uh, and he was like, and he, at that time, Chris Weidman had won one fight in the UFC. Were something, you holding your crystal ball and rubbing it at the same I time? I just something about that guy. I just I think it was after the Tom Lawler fight. Uh, I'm like this guy did something about him. Maybe he's from Long Island. I'm from Long Island, and <laughs> we both went to Hofstra. There was something about this guy that I just was like, man, this guy's gonna be hard to beat. And uh, and that's I'm just, I, I called it. I called it. Thank you. Uh, so this guy <laughs> Colby Covington is gonna be. A, a fucking star. I'm telling you. You, 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 you watch any of his fights? Mm-mm. You watch his fights? No. Nope. All right. Well, trust, trust me on this one. So let's, we're going to call Colby right now, and then we're going to get back to you guys. And uh, thanks for listening to the show. I, I'm, I'm enjoying this thoroughly. Okay. Well, I'm here with a uh, uh, UFC prospect. Uh, prospect from hell, man. This kid, we, we, were watching, we just watched your fight like two seconds ago. He's 7-0. Okay. Uh, Colby Covington. Coming off a big win last week in Australia. How are you, man? I'm doing good, man. How are you doing? I'm, we're doing good. We're doing really good. Uh, congratulations uh, good. on your uh, big win. How, uh, so what's going How does that feel? Um, it's good. You know, I mean, I, I want to be a little, you know, it was a dominating performance, but, you know, I expect, I expect better of myself. You know, I, I hurt my foot in the fight. I broke my fight, my foot in about the first minute throwing a kick. So that kind of slowed me down. I tried to slow the fight down a little bit, but. You know, it's a step in the right direction, and you know, just want to keep getting better. I mean, well, you are. I mean, you're uh, you're, you're you're seven or no. I, I I feel like people. You're you're one of these guys. Like I was saying, uh, only in MMA where a guy who's like undefeated, huge prospect, 
uh, and all the sport has less than 700 followers on, t- on, on Twitter. Uh, you should be <laughs> – pe- people need to know who you are. I mean, you're a two-time All-American in college. Uh, you keep fighting on Fight really? Pass. we got to get you on like, regular television. Well, I got my last fight. It was on Fox Sports too, but my first fight was on Fight Pass. Right. Just, just so yeah. you know, uh, it's Luca. Just so you know, the state of, of where we're at with this is Adam Hunter has, has, has tipped you as the next UFC champion. This is how how highly he's rating you on your two performances that he's watched. Yeah, he thinks that you've got the got the, I mean, Adam loves a wrestler. Let's not mess around. If if you can wrestle, Adam's all over you. But he's tipped you as, as the next big thing. So yeah. you should feel very good about that. Well, yeah, he has a really big I boner for you. Sure. Oh, thanks. That, that means a lot. I really appreciate that. <laughs> oh, it's, it's the truth, man. I, I mean, you uh, now you're uh, you're over at American Top Team. So are you just training all the time with like with like Robbie and Hector? Are, are those the guys you're uh, you're uh, sparring with? Yeah, pretty much, man. Those are my, some of my main training partners. Them and I train with uh, Tyrone Woodby a lot. He flew me out to St. Louis for about four weeks a while back when he got was getting ready for Rory and always working with like Diago Alves, Pitbull, picking his brain on stand-up type stuff. So got the best partners around. Now is, is Hector, now word is that Hector in sparring is like just crazy. It's like a, it's like a real fight in sparring. Is, is that true? The guy who spars with Hector tell us about, cause, because we, we've had him on the show before talk about how he got to that epic brawl with Josh Barnett, uh, how he knocked out Tyrek Safferdine in sparring. Uh, what's it like sparring with Hector? Um, well, for me, he respects me a lot. He knows that he, my wrestling background, he knows my pedigree. So he usually doesn't ever turn up the pace like that with me, but I have seen him go pretty crazy in sparring and he's definitely not someone you want to piss off in sparring. Like if you hit him too hard, he'll definitely freak out and, and uh, try and take your head off. But what is too him, hard? Him, he goes light, you know, and he respects me. Uh, Marina? What, 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 what do you mean by punch too hard? Like, just like. I mean, to him, you know, like if you jab him, he's, that's too hard. He's going to freak out and try and knock you out. So he, most of the guys just, you know, just trying to use footwork and just, you know, not really punching too much because he definitely takes, he takes that, he doesn't take that lightly. So he's a good sparring partner as long as you don't punch him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Exactly. <laughs> wait, 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 let me get this straight. If you jab him, he gets upset and then tries to take you out? <laughs> that is uh, the craziest bullshit I've I ever heard in my life. Yeah, he's. He's definitely, you know, he's not someone you want to piss off. Let's so put it that way. <laughs> nice. Now, uh, well, Tyrone Woodley, gets pissed, man. He gets pissed easily. Tyrone Woodley really w- uh, would be a really good training partner for you. I can, we just watched one of your fights, and you move really well. Like, your pressure is really heavy. I appreciate that. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> now, uh, now, I was going to say, now, in college, you were a two-time All-American. You were also John Jones's roommate. Now, what was that like yep. being John Jones' roommate in college? It was good, man. I got, you know, we got real close in college. We we, were, we shared the same room together, had a bunk bed, you know, for two years. And then Joe Soto was in the other room. But, you know, John's a good dude. He, you know, he's real. He's uh, he's a real family man. And, you know, he's a good person. We had some we had some good times in college together, some funny stories. So, like, what, come on, tell us some of these funny stories. I mean, did you guys bring home chicks together and have, like, just random threesomes with uh, girls? <laughs> oh my God. So, I mean, not too crazy like that, but you know, we was we got into a lot of trouble, you know. And when you're in a small town in Iowa, a lot of kids they're farm kids, and they, they always wanted to test themselves against the wrestlers. And I was a national champ in junior college, and John was a national champ, so they would always come to pick fights at houses at like our house parties and stuff. And we would just clear out the place like a bunch of towny guys, man. I mean, especially John, he'd be throwing people through windows and stuff like. <laughs> He was nuts, man. He he definitely he he don't he has a bad temper. When he gets mad, he gets mad. Wait, so you oh, okay okay let me okay so you and John Jones would have these house parties. These townies would show up and try to fight you guys. Yeah. And then John would throw them through windows. Exactly. And then and then you and John it would, be, it would be like you and John Jones and Joe Soto versus Iowa townies. Yeah, pretty much. Why like, isn't it this would a be movie? Like, like me, John, and Joe, and like probably like five or six wrestlers against like twenty townies that would just show up. To to the parties and try and raid the party scene. Just it would just be all out brawl. It was nuts. Roadhouse. <laughs> that, 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 I loved it. So then, so John. So you, like, now, did you, you and John were, were you were you guys like back to back fighting off townies? I mean, pretty, was he... pretty much, man. That's pretty much what it was. I remember one time we were. He was with, like, I mean, it was crazy, man. It just, it was nuts. Wait, man. no, he no, was, no. You remember a little one time? What happened? Crazy, what, what, what happened? That one time? I tried not to punch anybody because I didn't want to get stumbled. But. 
What's that? You said you remember one time what happened? This one time we were like by the stairs and like one guy was like coming down the stairs, like jumping down the stairs on me and like and like I was like double legging and trying to like pick him up and double legging and slamming him and Sean had like three dudes like on the ground like punching like it was it was nuts, man. Like, Jesus. Damn it, it's, <laughs> they were vicious, violent attacks. I see. I love getting guys when they come on the show that have never been on interviews before because they tell us the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll tell you the truth. I, I, I don't mind it. You know, I, I've changed my ways a lot since then. No, but that, that's that's great. So you and Je- now after you guys cleared out the townies, you guys high five and like uh, like afterwards, like, yeah, you guys have it like a beer. No, you no. Do you chest oh bump yeah, each we had other? a beer right after that. We just got we got the party started, man. We got the cake. We had kegs and. And we would just start pouring glasses of beer. Everybody, let's let and you know everybody, party on! <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I, I love this interview so far. This is uh, awesome. Okay, so you and John Jones had crazy parties. Now, now, who do you now? Did you know back then that John Jones was was going to be something special as far as like fighting goes? No way. No, I don't think anybody could have predicted that. The you know the reason he got into fighting was because. I was dating a girl at the time, and he, he was dating her best friend, and he got her pregnant, and then he got into, you know, he was having some school trouble, so he went home, and he was like, dang, I gotta, I wanna start, I gotta do something, I gotta start making money for the kid, you know, to, to provide for that kid, so he started fighting, and then boom, you know, he had like four fights, and he, in like two or three months span, and then he was in the UFC, and going big, you know? Yeah. Now, how did you get into fighting? Um, you know, I just, I, I saw his success and, you know, I, I kind of wanted to follow that same lead and, and a lot of guys that I had wrestled with in high school were doing the same thing. They were getting into MMA. So when I was in wrestling in college, I always had that dream that as soon as I was done wrestling that I wanted to go into fighting because I just think that the style fits me a little bit more, my type of style. Yeah, well, I mean, it does. I, I love that grind it out. I mean, I, I was making jokes about your fight last time being so boring that one of the ring girls got pregnant. Um, but... <laughs> What? <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just saying. Which, which one? No, I could. Last fight. Your last fight. I said there was so much. I said there was so much humping that one of the ring girls got pregnant. Okay. I, I, I was. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but I love it. I mean, I honestly, I don't think that you've lost one round so far in your pro career. Nope, I haven't. Not yet. Yeah, I mean, so uh, now. Are, Not anytime soon either. Now, who are you calling out? Who do you, Who do you want to fight next? Uh, you know, I, I don't want to call anybody out. You know, I don't think I'm in that position yet. You know, I've only had two UFC fights. So, you know, I, you know, whoever the UFC wants to put me up against, I'm not scared of anybody, man. I have the best guys, and I know I'm one of the best in the world right now. So, you know, and when whoever they want to match me up with, man, then, then you know, when that, that, then that's, got, that's what it's got to be. I mean, now how do you do, I mean, I know you're not going to tell me, but how do you do against, like, Robbie Lawler and, and like, sparring? Is it, like, is, is it very competitive? <sighs> Um, I mean, I, it sucks because I don't want to talk shit on this interview because if I told you the real truth, you guys would be, I think, shocked. And you guys, I mean, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want this to get back to Robbie and him be like a little bit mad. But you know, you know, I mean, I'm a wrestler, so he can't. You know, I have a question. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> what are you, know? you interrupting? This is the best part of the interview. <laughs> What's your question? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> What's your question? <laughs> He wasn't really saying anything. He was about to. You no, gotta, he you, wasn't. You gotta let the people talk. No, he oh, wasn't gonna say Jesus anything. Christ. Who who killed JFK? Well, actually, <laughs> I have a question. Okay, all right, all right, all right go on. <laughs> go on. This better be, this better gonna, be good. He, this better be really? good. Really? Yes. Let's hear your. your I really question. didn't think. He, were you okay? Never mind. I he, take it back. Guy, continue. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking moment. You're fucking. You're the boner killer. If I have a boner for him, you you fucking just killed my boner. You're the fucking Kim Winslow of interviews. All right. Okay. So let's hear your question. This fucking million dollar question. Never mind. Just keep going. No, Marina, Marina Trebek. Let's hear your fucking question. Trebek. What? Because you're, you're the you're the Alex Trebek of our fucking podcast. Why are you so mean to me? I'm not. Because he's telling us that he fucking whoops on Johnny Hendricks. I mean, then Robbie Lawler and sparring. Uh, right? Is that what you're gonna say? I was gonna ask who gets the first on, takedown in that. sparring. What? Who gets the first takedown? Like who? Like okay. Who gets the first? Oh, I mean, are you asking about? Uh, me and Robbie? Yeah, when you guys go. Oh, I mean, he's never taken me down. I, if there's any takedowns, it's definitely me taking him down. But, Aha, but, you okay. Know. Well, there you go. No, I won't talk about Robbie because I do train with him a lot, and he's a good friend of mine. I've helped him out in the restroom a lot, so, you know. Nice. All so right. Did you help him out when he was on Don't want to talk jump? shit on anybody, you know. <laughs> right. 
Did you help him out a lot when he was uh, fighting Johnny Hendricks? Like the first time, were you a big part yeah. of the camp? Yeah, when I when he was getting ready for Johnny, because I'm a southpaw, you know, he they were bringing me in a lot. You know, I was, I was helping him doing a lot of rounds with him, so we got in a lot of rounds together. Yeah, sounds sounds like a good matchup. So I think you're right there, yeah. man. I mean, look, if you if, if like you're beating him up and sparring like you're saying, um, <laughs> I really I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Hello. <laughs> hello. 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 No, but I think you're right there, man. It seems like you're right there. Uh, the UFC they got to do a better job marketing you. They got to they got to give you a a prime spot. You got to start like I, I know you were being a nice guy and you you know you blah blah blah. But I, how old are you? Thirty. Thirty. Now I'm uh, twenty six. Twenty six. All right, you got time. Right, he's my age. Yeah. So now, uh, that's, why, that's why I don't want to. That's why I don't want to talk today. You know, I just want. I'm, I'm going to be more prepared in two, two, three years. So you know, when that time comes, I'll be even more prepared than I am now. So I, you know, I don't want to be calling anybody out. You know, this isn't. You know, that's not my time. But I can tell you that in the short future, in the near future, I'm definitely going to be calling people out, and I'm definitely going to be trying to get that belt. So you're all about the timing. <laughs> yeah, it's all. It's life. Is timing right? Yep. Good yeah. for you, man. That's so, awesome. Now, do you have a, a girlfriend? You're married? What's the deal? No, no girlfriend, no marriage. I mean, it's just hard. To, especially, I live in Florida. The girls out there are crazy, man. They just, they're just they nuts, and I just don't want to deal with that right now. I just want to be focused 100% and committed my life to fighting. So, you know, hopefully if there's a girl that comes in that can, you know, be supportive and, you know, of me, like I'll be supportive of her, then, then so be it. But it's, it's probably not going to happen with a girl in Florida. So I'm just going to stick to training. Would you ever date a girl fighter? Yeah, you know, for sure. If, it, if you know, if we clicked and, hmm. and you know, things worked think out. long and hard about this one. <laughs> I don't see why not. <laughs> now, are, you, uh, are you slaying a lot of box? I mean, are you just kind of oh going through chicks God. in Florida? I know some of those girls put out and, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty hot. You got those Cuban girls. Are they coming for Hector and he can't, yeah. you know, he can't do all of them? Or are you getting any Hector's, like, leftovers? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, I don't want Hector's left up for man. He, I can't imagine what he does to his training partners. I can't manage, imagine what he does to girls. So, oh Definitely my god, don't know. I'll be looking for that. <laughs> no, according to Hector, is he like the Terry Crews and white chicks? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to classify. Hector's in his own classification. <laughs> Now, according to Hector, nobody in the UFC can get as many chicks as he can. Uh, he came on the show and said that he is the best at picking up chicks. Nobody can hang with him. Is that true? I don't, I don't know. But, I mean, I can't. I can't speak for him. But you know, I, Pibble does a good job. I know he's getting married, but before he, he got tied to knot, I mean, every girl in Florida. I mean, I went out with him one time to the Hard Rock. In uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and I, every single girl just gravitated towards him. It was See, like, go all it was crazy, man. Just like every single good looking girl just came up to him. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> wow. All right. That's good to know. Maybe Hector. So Hector's got some. Now you know Hector's going to try and knock out Tiago Alves. Now he's going to go crazy. Yeah, now, now I'm going to have scoring. I'm going to have fucking Hector try to beat me up and train. <laughs> so, so far in this interview, uh, you've uh, you've called out the number one and three guys in your own team. So, so. <laughs> no, I, that's not true. That is not true. I know. He's only messing with you. I'm, I'm messing with you. Well, listen, Colby. Uh, <laughs> it was an honor having you on. I I truly think that you're the next big thing in MMA. Um, where can people find you and follow you on Twitter? Uh, please follow me on Twitter at, at Colby Cub MMA and uh, Instagram Colby Covington and Facebook Colby Covington. Well, thank you so much, man. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Thanks, Luke. Thanks, Maria. Bye. Take it easy, bro. Take care. Bye. Have a good day, guys. Thanks, man. That was that was Colby Covington. <laughs> I like that guy. <laughs> Fucking guy is funny. And Marina, your timing. He's like, well, I don't want to say, but let's just say I have a question. Like, fuck. It was a good question. It was a great question. It was a lead because he wasn't going to tell you, and I just wanted to know who had a know do- more he dominant. Gonna... He just said, I never get taken down by Robbie Lowe. Nobody, nobody takes me down. Exactly. Inspired. Nobody takes me down. Exactly. Oh. What do you think about that guy? Jesus yeah, Christmas, yeah. leave me alone. <laughs> Jesus Christmas. Fuck. Jesus Christmas, really? I'm just doing my job. <laughs> Marina the interrupter. That, that be, wait, so wait, what were you I'm saying? I'm Jewish. It's true. It's true. That's why again. you said Jesus Christmas. I just got you again. What? Okay. All right. So what, now what were you saying? Uh, he sounds like he has a pretty good setup. I mean, the guy he's training with, uh, 
you know, some of the best in the world. Sounds like a pretty crazy place to be, though. Hector, <laughs> Hector and Tiago pulling all those chicks all the time, or whatever's going on. Um, I'm sure he goes out with them a lot if that's yeah. what's going on. Uh, but yeah, no, he's got a good setup there, and from the look of his fights, he, he looks like he's got potential. And it, when he starts working out what you're trying to do with him in interviews, then uh, maybe he'll be a bit, bit more entertaining. Cause, uh, I think you were just trying to trick him the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> but it was pretty good. He was just like, uh... <laughs> no, he seemed like, no, I love guys when they're just starting out. First of all, like, we're going to be the only ones interviewing him right now. I mean, there's going to be some a couple of people here and there. We're probably the biggest interview, which is cool, but I guarantee people are going to be fans of him now. Yeah. They're going to be like, and, and that... That vulnerability is what I like. The guy who doesn't know, like I don't understand. I guess the UFC doesn't teach like, or maybe they do, but uh, how to how to do podcasts, no. <laughs> right? Is there any type of training? No, right. Welcome to the UFC. Welcome. That's, to, that's your training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is when they did the fighter forum. Were you a part of the UFC at that point? Because well, they used to do that a couple years ago, where they bring all the fighters to Vegas. Yeah, they 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 scrapped that. They um, I missed it. Like I just joined the company and I missed it by like a month or something. Mm-hmm. And, but John told me about it. All the fighters come to one place and they give you a little bit of training, Twitter training, and all the rest. Of and it. those guys ended up fighting more that. there. They ended up talking shit about <laughs> each other there. I, I'll never forget the fighting. Forum. You imagine the, the security that needs to be put together. Matt, Matt Mitchell was talking about Tito Ortiz as Jenna's wife, and they were all talking shit at the fight before where they were supposed to learn about twitter training ended up talking shit about each other it was uh crazy i think ellis wins this fight the guy um i think i think i ellis is gonna win this fight i I believe Uh, how do you even like still continue to compete in mma when you've lost that many times uh i don't know and your records do you think it's just like some random dude like a generic dude like a dad who just thinks he's a badass and no he he fought some pretty decent guys uh there were some guys up there that i've like that are he's fought some good guys. Uh huh. It's just hello. I don't know. Colby Covington, how are you? Yes, sir. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing good. Good. You're on the MMA Roasted podcast. It's me, Joe, the Kid Perez. Uh, big fan of yours, man. You've been uh, you've been killing it. Your your last fight against Barbarena. Actually, my girl will forever be mad at me because of you, and I'll tell you why. Uh, we yeah. were go we were going shopping for wedding rings. Not not wedding rings like wedding bands. And you were fighting Barbarena, and it was such a close fight. Uh, it was a crazy fight that I was watching it on my phone while such not close, such a close fight. Are, are you serious? Not, right no, 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 not, not close fight. It's such a good, man. exciting fight. Come on, a, dude. A, a very exciting fight. I'll get very tell me, it was okay. a very that I was watching the fight while shopping for wedding rings, and my girl was like, you know, this is you know, and I, and I tried telling her that like I like know you guys and that. You know, marriages can be temporary and losses stay on your record. <laughs> but, she, but she wasn't feeling it. But uh, it was a ex- very exciting fight. Very exciting fight. So, Thank you, man. Much respect. I appreciate that. No problem. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Just, just getting out of training. My second training for the day at American Top Team. So I'm feeling good. You know, there's nothing like a good feeling after you get done working out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Uh, who are some of the guys that you're training with? Uh, I train with like Jorge Masvidal and Nate Coy and like Tiago Alves and Will Brooks and Dustin Poirier. Fuck. Guys like that. You got straight killers. Uh, straight killers. Um, uh, now you've been calling out Dos Anjos, uh, Raf- Rafael Dos Anjos, really, really funny. Uh, you really <laughs> want him. Uh, do you th- how close do you think you can get this fight or what? Um, I think, I don't know. I think there's maybe a strong possibility, you know, that – I guess some of my tweets got under his skin, so I think that he told Sean Shelby that those tweets, Colby's tweets, got under his skin. So he, we might be fighting soon. Now, what? Now, what? What about him makes you want to fight him so much? Uh, you know, just he's a big name and he's kind of up to what, what welterweight one seventy. And I don't know if he's ever fought at one seventy. I don't believe he has, but he's coming up to one seventy. He thinks he's going to come up to one seventy and just jump to the front of the line and be at the, the top of the pack, you know, but. That's not going to happen. This is my division now, and if you want to come to the top pack, you're going to have to go through me. So that's why I want that fight. Now, you tweeted this thing where you, it was like a fake Gmail account, and then you pretended that you were all these people saying some of the funniest shit to him. Uh, about you, you, you had his mom saying, I don't want you to hang out with Cody No Love. You had Uriah Faber saying tanning, what kind of tanning lotion to use, moisturizer. You saying sign the dotted line. But I'll bury you like the fucking British did. The, and then you, you go on, Dana White, perspective about, about Covington. It was hilarious. Did you make this yourself? 
Uh, you know, uh, I got creativity, man. You don't sleep on me in the creativity department. You know, I know what the UFC wants to see. So, you know, I'm just saying that I'm coming, man. I want that number one gold spot, and I'll do whatever it takes to get there. I mean, you were so funny. Uh, you had Ariana, you had Ariana Celeste saying that you want your phone number by any means necessary. Get me Colby's yeah, number. Man, every time, every time I'm on the UFC scale, man, she's staring at my ass. I catch her staring at my ass. Like, what's that all about? You know, like, why is she doing that? So you think Ariane is like checking you out? You think she wants to bang you? I think so, man. I think all that, all that other stuff is accurate. You know, Joe Rogan's trying to get some owner supplements and. And you know John Jones is doing his thing, you know. So, you know. Have you have you talked to Ariane at all? No, no, I haven't talked to her. I'm just joking. Uh, but then you had you had you had Edmund saying, "Don't fuck with me. If you ever much look at Ronda again, I will fucking whoop your ass so <laughs> fast." I mean, you had John Bones. I hear you recently got back from Columbia. Do you remember me? So, so, <laughs> so Jones is trying to get the guy from uh, cocaine. Scott Coker says, "Please stop calling." So he's actually uh, trying to get Bellator. Uh, you have Cathal Pedro. Hey man, yeah. You may think that was fake, man. It's, it's not my fault. I, I got a hold of the email account, man. Don't, don't hate me, man. Don't, I never said it was fake, so don't blame the messenger, man. <laughs> then you have Steven Seagal hit him up saying, you talked to Stitch. You got some secret moves. You didn't even show the Cormier. Then you had uh, Rafael Cordero says, I idea. Let's break that foot. Easy way out. I mean, this is hilarious, dude. This is like fucking top-notch comedy, bro. Uh, good work with this. Good work. I'm, I'm trying to get on your. I'm trying to get on your level. All right, all right. Relax, relax. <laughs> That's not be, that good. If I can be a quarter of funny as you are, then you know I'll be good in life. Oh, thank you, man. By the way, when you came to my show right before your fight, that really, uh, that really meant a lot. Oh, bro, it was awesome to be there. It's always good to get a good laugh out of you for a fight. You know, you always take the pressure off. And- no, it's awesome to see you every time. Oh, thanks. No, and then when I went to your fight, while you were walking to the cage, you're like, hi, Adam. And I was like, hey, what's up? <laughs> like, you actually said hello to me while you were walking to the octagon, which was also like, I couldn't believe it. That was awesome as well. I was like, holy shit. I was like, that's fucking, that was, that was really cool. <laughs> I felt very. That's my boy. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think my girl blew me that night, actually. So uh, thank you for the <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. So, so I mean, you're a guy though that I always say that I think that you know this new this new UFC thing is hurting guys like you, the new WME thing because you know when you when you have when you make GSP fight Bisbing or you make some of these like fights that don't really make any sense logistically, you're you're, t- you're taking away from the rankings and guys like you who are what what are you twelve and one thirteen and one I mean some I don't know what your record is but it's something really good. Uh, it, you get overlooked because you're not this like you know you're not from Ireland or you're not from Australia or England or some of these places where they have you know you're you're from Florida but but you're making noise by fighting but it seems like that's a lot harder of a road than just making noise because you have some kind of gimmick and you're a good fighter. Yep, absolutely. That's you know that's been a tough thing you know because with my style of fighting and, and you know, my, you know, I'm, a, everybody knows I'm improving, you know, I'm at the best gym in the world, just getting better every day. So, you know, I mean, it's tough to get fights, you know, like for my style, you know, if, if, if I don't start doing something and trying to get my, my name in the media that, and this and that, I'm not going to get those big fights. Cause you know, I'm winning a lot of fights. Obviously I'm winning 95% of the time. And, and the thing is, is that, you know, it's these days, it's tough to get fights. A lot of guys are turning me down. You know, they offer contracts and, you know, guys like Ryan, the flair, camera, who's and, and they openly denied him and declined him and said, no, I don't want to fight him openly. And there's other guys, you know, too, but you know, it's just, it's tough to get fights, man. I'm trying to stay active and show the UFC that I'm the best in the world, but you know, you can't do that if you don't get fights. So, you know, I'm here right now ready to go against anybody. You know, I'm, I'm not picking anybody. I don't give a fuck. I want to fight the best. So put him in front of me and I'm going to show him what I'm capable of. I mean, you're. I mean, you're right there. I. I mean, you are one of the best. I mean, and you, I, I talked to a lot of your training partners, guys like uh, Dean Thomas, and you know, they they're they're very high on you. I mean, they're extremely high on you. Uh, so uh, now you called out uh, Cowboy. Uh, do you think? Do you think that could, that could possibly happen? Uh, uh, Cerrone. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, definitely. It's not out of the the you know. It's definitely not out of reach, you know. It's something that I'm right there, you know. Look at my wins, you know. I've been on, 
you know, I got six fights in the UFC, six easy wins in the UFC, never lost a round. So, you know, I think they need to give me a step up on competition, you know. And I've been fighting a lot of these fights injured, man. I mean, I mean, 60% of the time I go in the UFC octagon, I'm, I'm injured, you know, fractured rib and my one loss, you know. So the last fight, you know, torn MCL before the fight, you know, one of my first fights, broken foot in Brazil. So, you know, uh, helping me, I'm dangerous, man. I'll beat anybody in the world, dude. And you heard it here first. Uh, you, you know, I, I believe it. Now, uh, I've heard from, like, I remember Bubba was saying an American top team, some of the sparring sessions, people are just trying to take their heads off. Is that how it's, like, going down there? Um, you know, there was a time when it was something like that, you know, and it, it was it was tough training and guys were you know, beating each other up. But, you know, the gym's evolved a lot, you know, and that's, that's what you got to do as a fighter. You know, you got to evolve and, and go get better with the curve, you know, and, and that, that style of fighting and doing that in the gym, people were starting to realize that that affects the fighters and the longevity of their careers. So, you know, a lot of the guys, they're not, they're not training like that. You know, a lot of us are smarter now. We're, you know, being a lot more, uh, you know, find a partner that you can trust that you work with and not just go in there like fucking two dogs trying to take each other's heads off you know so, so no no so, so no training with hector lombard anymore no what's that so you and hector lombard are no longer training partners uh you know i was never really training partners with hector lombard you know i think one time I, he wanted me to wrestle with him and like i was wrestling with him and and like taking it down and stuff but like Besides that, you know, we never really trained. We weren't really smart partners, you know. He right. goes hard in the gym, you know, and I'm not looking to go hard. I'm trying to save that in a fight. You want to see me in a fight, you're going to have your fucking hands full. I don't give a fuck who you are. Yeah, absolutely. Now, UFC 210, let's talk about that. Cormier versus AJ. Who do you like in that fight? Uh, I got to go with Cormier, you know. I, he, he broke Anthony the first time. And when you have that, that type, when you know that you've broken someone, that's a, good, that's a pretty strong feeling. So, you know, I think he's going to get it done again. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's just... The, what do you like? You know, I like Cormier, but Johnson took that fight on short notice, and he's got that one-punch power. That's the only thing. It's That's like, true. you know, when you have that kind of power, it, it, you're always in the fight. It's like, I feel like Cormier can make... Uh, Johnson can make a couple mistakes. Cormier can't make any. But that being said, yep. I, I think you're right. I think Cormier wins that fight. Um, I think... Uh, why Min Musasi? I got to go with Musasi, man. He's looked like a killer, and Weidman looks like he's dropping off, and there's been a lot of accusations that Weidman was on the juice, and you saw us fucking him up. So, you know, I'm going to go with Musasi. Where did you hear those accusations from? R- uh, allegations? Oh, uh, you know, I I just heard them, you know, from some friends, you know, some, some people within the business. So, you know, I, you know I'm going to keep that to myself, you know, but you know, that's just what I heard, you know. He looks a little different these days. Yeah, I mean, the thing about Wyman also, I feel like sometimes, you know, like getting there, you're so hungry getting there. You're just so fucking hungry. Yeah. yeah I mean, literally, he was hit with uh, the, the hurricane. He lost his family. He, he, had, he had nothing. He was a 10 to 1, underdog, some kind of ridiculous underdog against Anderson Silva when he, when he got there. But staying there is a fucking difference. <laughs> it's been hard for some of these guys to stay there, you know? And, uh, yeah. but. I, I, I think Wyman can win. I think Musasi wrestling could be his Achilles heel. And I, I, I hopefully we get back to the old Wyman, the embrace to grind Wyman, the all-American wrestler Wyman. And I think that guy can beat Musasi. If he tries to strike with him, it's going to be, it's over. Uh, Tiago Alves, Patrick Cote. I got to go with Tiago Alves, my training partner and friend. Always room for the good boys, my boy. How's he, how's he looking? He's looking good, man. He's ready to go. He's healthy. He feels good, you know. So, you know, I think he's, I think he's going to get it done. I think Cote is, you know, on, on the way out. You know, he's, getting, he's a lot older these days. So, you know, I, I think he's going to get it done. Now, Will Brooks, Charles Oliveira, is that, that's a, a rematch, correct? Uh, no, that's not a rematch. Oh, okay. He, I think Will fought a different Oliveira. Oh, a different Oliveira. Oliveira. Okay. You're right. This is yeah, the Bronx. This is the right. guy that's coming up from 145. Yes, right. You're absolutely right. So, Oliveira is ranked number nine. How's Will looking? He looks really good, man. He looks sharp. He looks fast, you know. He looks ready to go, man. I think he's hungry right now. He's motivated after his last fight. You know, it's a com- coming back from a loss, like, really, like, you know, that that's what shows what you're all about, your character, and, you know, how you're in the gym after a loss and how you're carrying yourself and this and that. So, you know, I think he's hungry right now, and, and he's going to get the job done. Another guy who I feel like is extremely overlooked, along with you, is uh, Kamaro Usman. 
Uh, he's taking on Sean Strickland, uh, a guy goes by the name of Tarzan, uh, t- trains over here in California. Who do you like in this fight? I mean, I don't even care, dude. They're both they're both a waste of time, you know. I mean, Cameron Usman's been ducking me since CFA days in Florida. The guy won't fight me, but he wants to say he's the best wrestler in the division. I think that's fucking hilarious. Oh, you want to overlook me? You think you have better credentials than me? He wrestled D2. I wrestled D1. There's a difference in levels. And another thing is, I think it's funny, he's putting up pictures. Oh, I was an NCAA All-American in, in, in favor of NCAA Division One All-American Week, and that's Division One. He was a Division Two wrestler. I think that's hilarious because he's a fake, and he's trying to protect that ranking he's got. He's got that 11 ranking. That's a fucking joke. He won't fight me. He's a fucking joke. So, you know, I don't even give a fuck about that fight. But didn't he train at the Olympic Training Center? And I mean, he does have some good wrestling credentials. What does that What does that mean, dude? Anybody can go to the Olympic Training Center. I mean, if you fucking filled out an application partner to go be a training partner at the Olympic Training Center, you could do it, Adam. Oh, maybe, maybe I should go there. <laughs> <laughs> so, you should, bro. Let's go there together, man. I I'm, I'm, going, man. I know some of the coaches, Brett Metcalf and guys like that over there. I know those guys, man. Jesus. Let's so, got just. So, um, but what about this guy, Sean Strickland? He's eighteen and one. I don't know much about him, uh, but he's eighteen and one. That's pretty good. Good record. He has a win who over. Who do you, he beat Tom Breeze, uh, Alex Garcia. He beat Luke Barnott, a fight that I thought he lost. He beat Bubba, Bubba McDaniel, who I think is my uh, Uber driver now. Uh, so, I, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I think Camaro beats uh, beat Sean Strickland. I do think he wins that fight yeah um, he probably will that kid all he, all he does is jab he's tall he's not very good against guys that pressure fight him you know he has to be the nail he, he can't or he has to be the hammer he can't be the nail so you know, i don't know it's it's really just a, a showcase of the the guys that are like the gatekeepers you know on the outside so they're not relevant really all right pat cummings jan blachowicz uh, I gotta go with Cummings, man, for the wrestlers, man. He's gonna hold it down for the wrestlers and get it done. Yeah, I like Pat Cummings, man. I remember when he was living with Mayhem yeah. uh, at Mayhem's <laughs> house, and, the, and he had just gotten out of jail uh, for stealing stuff at Penn State, uh, coming back and robbing co- college kids or something. What? He went to jail for a year with Eric Bradley, and then he came out, and then he lives with Mayhem. I think he, I think living with Mayhem was worse than jail. <laughs> 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 But I, oh, I, I like Pat Cummins too. And then uh, how's, how's Mayhem doing? He's doing better. Uh, I actually posted that I need a, I need someone to cat and dog sit. And Mayhem's like, I'll do it. I'm like, you out of your fucking mind? That's all I. Need. I would only do that if I wanted this place to blow up. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> uh, well, you know, May, when when Mayhem's in, in, in like the gym, he's doing great. I mean, he's got a huge heart. And he's a guy that drove two hours one time. It's funny, he actually drove two hours to talk to the, my wrestling team that I coach and give him like a motivational speech. Oh, awesome. Yeah, but then like the next year oh, he's on the news. Uh, uh, <laughs> there's a fucking SWAT team looking for him the next year. Uh, and I, I, all I could think about was like the parents was like, this is the guy that motivated my kids to wrestle? Like, uh, I was like, oh shit, maybe that wasn't the right guy. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> maybe not the best for a mod. No, but uh, you know, Mayhem, uh, Mayhem's an, he's an OG, and yeah, I, yeah. I, I have to get his lawyer because he's gotten out of like 50 things that other people would have gotten arrested for and put away. <laughs> I mean, the fact that he had a SWAT team looking for him, uh, and it was on L- KTLA with helicopters because he barricaded and didn't do any fucking jail time. Who the fuck is rip- I mean, he must have dirt on every judge in California or something. But, uh, so, uh, and then uh, uh, my girl, Caitlin Chuk again. Uh, she's fighting Irene Aldana. You know, you know Caitlin? Nah, I don't know who that is. Uh, she's really cute. She's, she trains out in, uh, at like Sarah Longo, Pennsylvania. She's hot. She's got a great ass. Mm. Uh, and, um, oh, nice. Yeah, and she's an, actually a pretty cool chick. She lost to Liz Carmouche, but it was a good fight, actually. Uh, UFC 200, and she beat Lauren Murphy. Okay. So, um, what about you? Any, okay, nice. Any any new women in your life? Uh, you know, uh, I can't talk about that right now. But uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, I'm just I'm chilling, man. You know, I'm so I'm focused on my dreams, my goals. You know, so I like how like you how you'll call like the 
fucking baddest people in the world pussies. But I go, you have a girlfriend? I can't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> like anybody else, like, yeah, yeah, man, I'm fucking this one or that one. Uh, hey, what do you think about this guy? Are you crazy? That guy? But fucking Kamaro Usman, you're calling a pussy. The guy looks like fucking, the, you know, 37 <laughs> Greek gods combined. But, but your girlfriend you're afraid of. Like, wh- what's going on? Uh. I mean, I haven't found the one yet, you know? I mean, that's just it, you know? Are you on Tinder and Bumble or? No, fuck no, dude. I don't do Tinder or any of that bullshit, fucking matchmaker shit. I'm not, that's just weird to me, man. I'd rather be in the gym training, you know, and if something happens, something happens. If not, it doesn't. Whatever's meant to be is meant to be. Yeah, but you're listen. Look, you're a college athlete. You must. You were John Jones' roommate in college, and all you guys did back <laughs> in the, in Iowa was bang townies and like and and actually beat up townies and like fuck their girlfriends and like fuck girls on farms and stuff. Uh, now you're in. Uh, now you're in Miami, which is the, the hottest Cuban asses in the world. You're not telling me that you're not running through some of that. I mean, I'm enjoying life, you know. I'm taking it one day at a time, you know. It's the journey to the gold belt, Adam. That's what it's all about, you know. You got to have fun. You got to enjoy life, so, you know. Well, you're right there, man. People people are starting to realize, man. I know, I look, as a comic who I feel like I'm in a similar place that you are in my comedy career where I'm like, I'm fucking killing every night. People are coming to me and being like, dude, that was the funniest shit I've ever seen. Why aren't you on this? Why aren't you on that? And I'm fucking every night. People are like, I don't want to follow you. I don't want to follow you. I'm not following you. And I go out there and I fucking give it 100% and I'm getting standing ovations in fucking Reno or, or some fucking podunk town and then I'm watching this one have a Netflix. <laughs> I'm driving past fucking Eliza Schlesinger's billboard going, what the fuck? And I hear you. But I'm telling you what I tell myself is that eventually when you're the best, if, if you're the best, people will ha- doors will have to open and you're getting there, Colby. Yeah. You're fucking getting there. Uh, the people will realize it because you're, you're, you're a monster. Uh, what's his name? Brian Barbarena is a tough motherfucker. Uh, that's a guy who beat Warley Alves. He fucking, you know, obviously ran through Sage Northcutt and everything else. He hadn't lost in like, a long time, and, and 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 you beat him up. I mean, you're 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 right there, dude. Sure. It's just pe- yep. people are the people are eventually going to realize it. So I realize it, Colby. <laughs> I appreciate that, bro. No nope. support means everything, man. No Thanks problem. Have me on the show again. Of course, we're gonna get you back on the show soon, Colby. You're the man. Have a great weekend. All right, Adam. I'll talk to you soon. Take care, guys. Take care, brother. All right, that was Colby Covington. I fucking love that guy. How rare is it to actually get a funny MMA fighter? Oh, he's <laughs> how rare is that? He's, he, that dude's fucking hilarious. Yes, he's a good dude too. He is. You can have him in studio, but he lives in what Florida? Florida. That's a fucking problem. Oh, but man. we're wait, listen. We're having a new studio mid mid April. Here's some big news, people. We got a new studio, four cameras shoot each podcast, four cameras. Going to be on YouTube. Going to be edited. We're having people getting behind it. We're, they're going to promote it. We're fucking uh, things sponsors. Are, things yeah. are, things are coming together, uh, and we'll be able to do Skype, like the MMA Hour or whatever else these things. Yes. And so the good news is that people listening, you're going to be like our OG audience and be like, "Holy shit! I was there back when fucking those guys had nothing." So uh, uh, <laughs> while you're at it, you could be eating. What do you want to be eating? Blue Apron. Blue Apron is the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country. But uh, but she's got some big Colby. Ones. Yeah, we're calling Colby. Colby Covington. Um, I like Colby. I mean, he's. I I I think what he, I think you know I don't like everything he says, but is it an act? I, that's what that's what I want to know if it's an act. That that's basically is what it, I want to know. Yeah, is this all okay, fam? Yes. Yeah, oh, hey, Colby Co- hey, Colby Covington. It's Adam Hunter and CB Gold. Yo, what's up, Adam? How are you, man? Good, bro. How are you? Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you great, man. Congrats on getting the uh, okay. the uh, title shot for an interim belt, man. Congratulations. Oh, shit, man. Don't tell me congrats until I actually do something and have the belt around my waist. It's, I mean, it's, it's a big task. Uh, how are you preparing for Rafael Dos Anjos? Uh, I've been, been preparing real hard, man. I've been, I got a different girl for each day of the week. We've been working my cardio in the bedroom, you know, doing a lot of uh, hot tub, you know, mis- 
uh, hot tub time machine, you know, a lot, a lot of sex, you know. I got to get ready to dunk these balls on his forehead. So you're just, wait, okay, so your plan is to teabag him? No, teabag's yeah, I'm planning over the to eyes. teabag him right in the middle of uh, the United Center in Chicago, you know. Michael Jordan was famous for dunking balls there. I'm going to be dunking my balls right in the middle of that arena, and, and people are going to know what's up. Wait, Colby, uh, teabag or Arabian goggles? That? Forget him. Okay, listen. <laughs> so, Kobe, so you're fighting those años. Now, you, you can't really be training by just fucking different girls every day of the week. I mean, you're actually taking this seriously, right? Dude, I'm not taking this serious. Why would I take it serious with this little midget, man? He, he couldn't beat me if I didn't train the rest of the camp, man. I, as long as I got my cardio up, which, you know, I'm putting in two-a-days, and I'm getting it in, if you know what I mean, with the ladies. That, that's my workout, you know. I'm working hard. You know, I trained my whole life for this. He ain't going to show me something i already seen. Now, who are these ladies? Uh, just random girls from Miami? Yeah, just random girls from Miami, uh, you know, girls from New York, girls from all over, you know. Just, just, bang them, just banging away. Now, it was supposed to be in Brazil, banging away. and then it got moved to Chicago. Why did it get moved, and how did you feel about that? Yeah, you know, you know, I feel good. Uh, it got moved because they didn't want this great day in American history to be on Brazilian soil. Those filthy animals didn't deserve this. So, you know, I'm happy to give my people what they want, you know, a, a great day in American history. All right, Colby. Li Colby, listen, uh, me and you are friends. I like, I like you a lot, but I don't think you really think these people are – they're not filthy animals, Brazilians. Uh, what do you – come on. Th th that's the thing where it's like you're, you're putting – grouping people together, and that's, that's called being racist um, or nationalist, whatever. You, you don't really think that Brazilians are all filthy animals. It's not a race, buddy. I know. I know it's not a race. But I know that, that's what everyone says who's racist uh, they just, or, or a bigot. Oh, it's not a race. But I'm just saying, you don't, you're not really lumping in – you know, why do you call them filthy animals? Uh, you know, let's, let's be honest. Let's look at what, how they treat fighters when they go there that, you know, I'm not the only fighter that they threw water bo bottles at, scream, you will die. Try and grab me when I'm walking out to the octagon. You know, there's a long history of it. Look at this. You know, what they did to Matt Brown, you know, the way they treat American fighters when they go over there to put on a show for them, it's disgusting. And they, and they are filthy animals and that place is a dump. So, you know, it, you know, everybody has a different opinion and, and everybody has, you know, things differently. Now, but wouldn't those people, like the actual person who tried to grab you, like, okay, let's say he's a filthy animal, right? Or the other guy that, that, that yelled, you will die. He, that guy is, okay, you call him a filthy animal. But to lump everybody together, don't you see what, that's why people are upset about that? Uh, not really, because, you know, I'm not the one lumping them together. If you think you were being a filthy animal, then, then you were. If you saw my apology after the fight, you know, I didn't. I'm not grouping the people together. It's, it's all the people that wanted to take it that way. They, you know, you don't have to think you're a filthy animal if you didn't think you were. <laughs> got it. Got it. Okay. All right. So we agreed to disagree there. Uh, now, there we go. Now, do, Dos Anjos. Now, you got into it recently with Bubba Jenkins, who's Dos Anjos wrestling coach. What happened there? Oh, you know, I didn't get into it. He just, you know, he's just trying to stir the pot. He's just trying to talk a little shit. But, you know, the... The guy has no credible source to talk shit, you know. He just, he sounded dumb, you know, going on one of my friends from Oregon's Instagram page and trying to trying to talk some shit like, like he's something big or something, you know. So, you know, he, it is what it is. You know, I got no ill will feelings. So, Bubba, he, you know, he's in Raphael's corner. He, obviously, he's going to take Raphael's side, but come June 9th, he's going to know who daddy is. Now, Colby, I'm picking you to win, man. I honestly think, I think you, I think you have what it takes to, to, to beat Do, uh, Dos Anjos. I honestly do. I think you're, I think you have the wrestling, the, 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 uh, the uh, striking. I think you got a lot of, I think you have the it factor, the anger. Uh, but this dude is, is no joke. I mean, Dos Anjos is a fucking monster. I mean, you saw what he did to uh, uh, the ex uh, Robbie Lawler. I mean, not many guys can do that to Robbie Lawler. Yeah, you know, I, I saw what he got, what he did to Jeremy Stevens too. He got melted by a featherweight. So, you know, I don't really take. It's true. I don't take too much into account what he's done. You know, he, his last three fights were hand picked opponents at him. I'm trying to fight that guy from Singapore. We were supposed to fight in Singapore. He said, no, no, I don't want to fight Colby, blah, blah, blah. So they put him down on the card and, and they put me on the, you know, higher up on the card. And I got a bigger fight with Dung Hum Kim, the number six guy at the time. So. You know, RDA has been running me for a while, and I'm, I'm just glad we could finally cross horns, you know. 
but you know what's funny about this, Adam, is all the people that are hyping him up, oh, man, he's so good, he looked unbeatable at 170, this and that, they're going to be the same people that are saying, oh, he's a washed-up lightweight, oh, he should never have been at 170 after I beat him. So, you know, there's just a lot of hypocritical and two-faced fans in this sport, and, and I just look forward to hearing their excuses come June 9th in, in Chicago. I, I definitely agree that a lot of fans are – you know, they're definitely Fairweather fans and they're, they're all about the next big thing. Yeah. And I'm not that guy. I'm mm-hmm. with you when you're bottom, when you're top, when you're back to the bottom, back to the top. I'm a, I'm a fan of the sport and, and of the fighters of all different levels. Um, what happened with Usman? I know that you and Usman don't like each other. Kamaru, he was backstage talking shit, but you didn't engage. You just stayed on your phone. Was that to piss him off more or just because you didn't want to get into a fight there? There was security. What was the deal with that? I mean, why would I pay, pay attention to a kid, to a little kid at the kid's table? I'm the king. I'm at the head of the big boy's table, Adam. You know, I ain't worried about that little scrub, you know. Like, UFC came up to me. They're like, hey, Kobe, be on your best behavior. So, you know, I'm looking down, seeing my phone, that my phone, that my fight got switched to Chicago. And he's trying to run his mouth like he's a thug or something. Like, if he's so thug and he's so hard, why didn't he touch me? Why didn't he do nothing? You know, he's just... He's all talk, Adam. He's looking for attention. You know, he's trying to bark up a tree that he's not ready for. I mean, the kid doesn't even have a ranked win yet, you know. So, you know, he's just looking for attention, looking to, to stir up the pot a little bit. But, you know, I ain't, got enough, I ain't got nothing to do with that kid. You know, I got bigger and better things to do. I got RDA to take care of. And, and then Woodley's next. I'm going to unify my belt. So, you know, he, Cameron Usman's got some proving to do. You know, he's three or four fights away from me at, at, at the best, you know, because after I finish RDA – you know, it's on to Woodley, and after I finish Woodley, it's going to be, you know, Thompson Till winner. So, you know, he's just trying to get some attention. You know, his manager's telling him what to do, Ali, that shady-ass fuck. So, you know, I, I don't really got much to say. The, the little kid's at the kid's table. Now, what about Mike Perry? Is he like, what, what happened with you and Perry? Oh, dude, he's, that guy's the biggest clown in the sport. He talks <laughs> his big game like he's so hard. That guy's a fucking scrub. He's got a horse face trainer, horse face ratchet trainer. I mean... Let's be honest, dude. If you listen to Perry's interviews, the guy's fucking, he's literally the, the product of cousins fucking in Orlando, Florida. So the guy's a complete scrub. You know, he hasn't done anything in the sport. He just got fucking his ass beat and concussed by a guy and knocked out. So, you know, that kid's, that kid's not even my level. He's going to be fighting in Indian casinos by the end of the year when I'm champion. Well, they're definitely, I mean, you and Perry definitely don't like each other. Uh, I think they broke up, him and that, uh, the girl that, he, that was training him. I, I believe that she posted that they broke up, uh, his, his uh, girlfriend. I credit Colby with the steal. Um, <laughs> now, uh, now, Conor McGregor, we got to talk. Conor McGregor, obviously, we know what happened last week. He threw, he threw a dolly, uh, you know, causing all kinds of chaos. You tweeted out that cocaine's a hell of a drug. Uh, is that is that what you think happened? You think he was on some kind of four day coke binge? You think that was a smart move on his part to get attention? What would you have done? How if you, what would you do if you were Dana White? What would you if you, uh, if you were on the bus? And what are your thoughts about Conor McGregor? Oh, uh, you know, my thoughts about Conor McGregor is he's a coked up little leprechaun. And, and let, let's be honest, you know, Adam, I've been stealing all the headlines that you know the last since I fought in October. So I've been in the headlines every month. So he had to go over and do something over the top to steal some of the headlines back. He knew Colby Chaos is the king of the headlines in the media now. So he had to go throw a dolly through a bus to, to get the headlines back on his side. And, and obviously, we all know he's just looking for attention. You know, he's, he's, not, he's not looking to come back and fight. He's not looking, you know, he's got enough money in the bank. He's just looking to get some attention from the media and get, get some hype around him again. But, you know, my thoughts are, is, you know, he's a joke, man. He's, He's a little lightweight, you know. He doesn't want none, none of this at welterweight. He's been talking like he's ready for three belts, but after I get the belt on June 9th, he's not going to say another word about 170. Mark my words. So if you beat uh, Rafael Dos Anjos and Woodley still isn't cleared to fight because of his shoulder surgery, would you want to fight McGregor after that? <laughs> I mean, not that I'd want to fight him, but, you know, he's not going to want to fight me, man. After he sees what I do to RDA, I'm dunking my balls on RDA face right in the middle of the United Center on pay-per-view in Chicago and Conor McGregor is not going to want nothing to do with Colby Chaos Covington I can assure you that he's, he's going to know that's a fight he has no chance to win and and we know Conor likes to handpick his fight so he's not going to take a fight that he knows he can't win now Colby when I first started becoming uh you know friends with you having you on the show you were very kind of polite quiet 
didn't you just kind of stood your ground you you were just kind of waiting and then you were getting no attention you were right number eight number nine nobody wanted you uh nobody really wanted to fight you and then it seemed like overnight you just sort of were like fuck it so, something changed in you and you started talking a lot of shit and, and and becoming this like outspoken guy what what was it did you see the light did you, all of us did you watch what was it that actually caused this change I just started being myself, man. I just, I was holding back before, you know, I was trying to be something I wasn't, you know, I was trying to be this nice guy, this, this, this kid that everybody looks up to, this, this hero. And then I started thinking about it. I'm like, this isn't me, man. And let alone we're in the octagon and we're fighting in a steel cage to take another man's brain cells. So why would I, why would I filter who I am? I'm not going to filter who I am. I'm just going to be who I am. You know, I am a super villain. That's just, that's just who I am. And, and people can hate me and they can love me, but at the end of the day, they're paying to watch me. So, you know, this is, I'm just opening up and I'm being who I really am inside. You know what, actually what backs up your theory though, oh, not your theory, like your, your, your statement. Uh, we had Ben Askren on the podcast. And Askren said he was coaching a fighter to, who was going up against you and, and in wrestling, in college wrestling, and you were beating his kid. And then you went up to Ben Askren and you're like, you don't want none of this. And Askren was the coach, not even wrestling, but you wanted to wrestle Askren at that time, who was an Olympian, which kind of backs what you're saying. Like, you, have you always been like this, like before MMA? <laughs> Yeah, if you if you go look at any of my wrestling matches in college, man, I was punking, dude. I was picking them up, slamming them, putting my feet on their back, just disrespecting them, and just doing things that that you know were out of the ordinary for a wrestler. You know, I just you know this is how I've always been, man. I like to dominate kids and run guys in the ground. You know, I'm this thing. I'm not here to make you know make people happy. You know, fuck your feelings. You know, this is the fight business. So, you know, I've, this is who I've always been, and, and everybody knows this is who I really am. Now you were roommates with John Jones in college. It was you and John, and you guys used to beat up townies in Iowa, correct? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that was, those are some good times. Now back That's then, where we really learned, we really learned to fight. Now back then, it was you, Jones, and then what's his name, uh, Joe Soto. We're all living in a house together. <laughs> you guys were beating up townies, and I guess you and John were friends back then. But now you're not. What 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 happened with you and Jones? Yeah, you know, we used to be, like, really good friends, best friends, at each other's side. We wouldn't leave each other's side. But, you know, as soon as he started doing the steroids, he started just turning into a different person. He'd have roid rages. He'd come home, and literally there'd be, like, a blanket not right in the house. Call me, what the fuck? Ah! Start fucking roid raging out, just freaking the fuck out. I'm like, dude, chill the fuck out. And he would, like, you know, like, literally try and back me in a corner, like, with these demon fucking eyes, because that dude literally is fucking Satan's fucking little angel, or Satan's son. And, and we just, I just lost all my respect for him, you know? He just fucking turned into a completely different person and a fake piece of shit. And, and he's just, he's such a fake fuck, you know? He tried to play this role like, oh, I'm all about God, all this and that. No, you're fucking not, you piece of shit. He's just trying to lie to all the fans. Look at him, dude. He's, he's too busy being on coke bingers, on steroids, fucking in the club, hitting fucking pregnant ladies and running off from the scene, almost killing a pregnant lady. And then, and then fucking wrapping Bentleys that the UFC gave him around poles with hookers in the back. Like, oh, I thought you were a family man. That guy's a piece of shit, low-life dirtbag. So he was doing steroids back in college, too? Yeah, he was doing steroids back in college. He was at 197. He wanted to go up to heavyweight. So he was like, fuck, dude, let me start, let me start juicing up. I want to get up to heavyweight. So, you know, he got on this little lifting program and started doing steroids with this, this other kid that was in our, in our dorm with us, this kid named Nate Willard. He was from California, so he was giving them all the inside scoop on the steroids, and, and they started doing all the shit, you know, HGA, testosterone, and he just fucking had roid rage. He had temper tantrums, and that's where I lost all my respect, because he would come home, you know, that if there was a dish wrong, he would just freak the fuck out. If, if we weren't watching TV or he wanted to play video games, he would just lose his shit, man. I'm not even lying. And that's just when I lost all my respect for him. I, I wanted nothing to do with him. I knew he was a piece of shit, and he was a fake two-faced bitch. I could, I could see, I could see why, uh, why you would feel that way. Um, fuck. All right. So Colby, Colby Covington, you're fighting June, June 9th in Chicago for the world title against Rafael Dos Anjos. Now, do you read any of the comments people are making on your Instagram or uh, do you even look at that? Nah, let's be honest. You think I got time for that, Adam? I'm out here preparing for a world title. I'm with a different chick every day. I ain't got time to look at these nerds and virgins' comments. Nice. Well, listen, Colby, good luck, man. 
Good luck. Keep it up, man. I'm, I'm, I, I shocked the world, dude. Fuck it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, team Colby. Let's do it, baby. So uh, good luck and thanks Fuck for- yeah. Team Adam. Team MMA roasted all day, baby. Fuck thanks yeah. Thanks for giving me a voice as always. One thousand percent, man. And thanks for uh, being on the podcast and good luck with everything, brother. All right, man. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. All right, that was Colby Covington. Uh, man. Uh, I really, I had it written out. I was about to tweet. Colby Covington just said John Jones is the son of Satan on the MMA Roasted podcast. I, I, I wish he was more outspoken sometimes. I think that. I know. <laughs> he, he just, uh, we got to bring like the character out of him so he Fuck, can like. Man. I don't even think he knows who he's fighting next. Dude, like, uh, he, Colby Covington is, is, uh, is a piece of work. Holy shit. Let's man. just put it this way. If he does what he says he's going which to he do, which is very which capable is of doing, very, 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 very possible. If he beats RDA and he beats Tyron Woodley, like you talk about soft spoken now. Can, I mean, he's never, he's never really been hurt in the octagon, though. Like he's he's no, he's it was been, that it was that uh, guillotine that came out of nowhere to fucking um, Warley yeah. Warley Alves. Right, but he's never but he's never been rocked. He's never been hurt. Uh, he's got good defense, good, 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 great wrestling. Uh, but I mean, Rafael dos Anjos is a fucking is a badass. It's gonna be a good fight. It's gonna be a great it fight. Is, it is a I'm great gonna fight. I'm gonna try to go to that fight. So, CB, what do you have coming up? <laughs> You're just gonna laugh at me, but just a tattoo shop, and mom and dad are leaving the country next week, so I'm staying at the house. And tattoo shop. Let's do a tattoo shop for now. W- w- watching dogs. <laughs> Walk the dogs. No, watching dogs. And the name of the tattoo shop and, is and uh, Graffiti Palace Tattoo, North Hollywood, California. Um, eight one eight nine eight zero two two three five. If you want to roast it, what happens? If you mention MMA roast, it will give you a ten percent t- uh, discount on any tattoo above shop minimum. Shop minimum sixty bucks. And I also have another uh, career that might be blooming. Um, Gay porn star? No. Oh, what's that? Fuck no. My mom's friend is one of the, like the premier dog trainers in LA, if not the country, and she wants an assistant and a way to expand her business. Um. So she has offered to train me, and she said, you know. Because you're one of the dogs? All right, go on. Well, okay. All right, well, she said, I'll- you know, things are really good right now. She's a really good dog trainer, Kimora Tolliver. Uh, Instagram is Barker's Anonymous. She's amazing. Um, and, yeah, so that's, I mean, you guys can make fun of me as much as you want. But, like, I I dude, playing good. with dogs and puppies all day and just training them, that's, like, that's, that's that sounds life. fucking great to me, so, man. Are you going to graft the dogs or no? Graphing's dead, man. I'm done. Good. All right, listen. Uh, I will be at the San Diego Comedy Palace Friday and Saturday this week in San Diego. I can't wait for this UFC. I can't wait. This This, this card is so stacked. This card is is more stacked than John Jones' medicine cabinet. Uh, (laughs) This 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 card is more stacked than John Dodson getting his height measured. (laughs) This is a good card. This is going to be a really, really good card. Uh, By the way, hello, Colby. Hello? Hello, Colby Covington. Yo, what's up, big dog? What's up, man? How are you? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? Good. How you feeling, man? You ready? I'm ready to go, man. Born ready, man. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Hey, yeah, that's a good point, man. So it's Saturday night, Rafael Dos Anjos. I think it's the main event. I don't know what everyone's talking about. Romero versus Whitaker. This is who? The, yeah, exactly. This is this is the main event. Yeah. Uh, has have people been rude to you? Have they been nice to you? What's the feeling in Chicago like? Uh, it seems like, you know, for the fighters, you know, I'm, I'm under a lot of their skins, you know, I can tell they're just, they're all pissed off, but, you know, I got my security guard team with me, so no one's going to lay a hand on me. Well, who's, who's giving you a hard time? Oh, no one's giving me a hard time, you just tell how they're looking at me and the vibes I'm getting next to them, they're all like, you know, they're just mad, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's just jealousy, they, they want to be where I'm at. Like, which ones, though? I mean, I can't. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say names, you know, because I'm not gonna give them a spotlight. Man. Right. I don't want to talk about them. Dude, let's talk about me. Let's talk yeah, about let's talk about you. Home. Let's talk about you. So, I've been watching your videos, man. I love your videos. Uh, the ones with the porn stars, right? Who are those? Yeah. Por- who are those porn stars? Where did? How did that happen? Where did you find these girls? And, and, and what's going on with there? Yeah, man. You know, I found them in South Florida. You know, I got I got a hook up through a guy named Icy Mike. So much respect and shout out to my boy Icy Mike and Bob. That sounds they run professional. A, a porn set called Cam Soda. So uh, you know, they're the they're the big guys in the industry, and they're from American Top Team. So you know, th- that's my team right there. 
Now, are you sleeping with these girls? Are they having threesomes? Because you, you're, you're tweeting out that you're having threesomes, but then one of them said that she didn't have a threesome with you. Like, what, what, what happened? Yeah, the one that said she didn't have a threesome is the one that I cut out. She didn't make the seven and a half cut and above, Adam. I have standards, bro. I'm sorry, dude. I don't care about feelings, bro. You know I'm a guy that doesn't care about feelings, so it's not my fault that, that she didn't make the cut. So other girls, now, are, now do you, how do you spit game? Because a lot, a lot of guys out there are probably listening to this, so how could I fuck a threesome? Like, will you walk us through the best way to pick up these, these, these girls? Die, reborn, Colby I mean, Covington. The thing is, you just got to be yourself, man. You can't, you can't care about, like, what they think. You just be yourself. Be outlandish. I mean, it helps that, you know, I'm a UFC fighter fighting for a uh, welterweight championship. I mean, that definitely goes a long ways. But, I mean, I'm also a good-looking dude. So, even if I did it, I would be getting with them anyways. But just speak, speak truth, you know. And, you know, the thing is, girls are really insecure. So, if you can, like, connect with them on that level where you, you make them feel comfortable, then they'll do whatever you want. So how do you how do you do that? Yeah, you know, just talk to them. You should wait wait till you see open workouts in uh, the the ways this week. I got a couple new ones with me, so uh, it's gonna be a show. I got a couple new little cheekies with me. No, so did you fly some of the porn stars to Chicago with you? No, uh, there's the biggest porn convention going on in in Chicago. It's called Exotica. So. It's going on right now in Chicago, so, you know, a couple of them hit me up. They want to hang out, get on the Colby Chaos train before, you know, it gets too busy. And I can't even have time for anybody. Right. Now, now you said that you're going to teabag Rafael Dos Anjos in the middle of the octagon, right? So you're, yep. so you're going to knock him out, pull down your pants, and put your balls in his mouth? Yeah, exactly. I mean, Michael Jordan is notorious for dunking balls in the middle of the United Center. So, you know, he's also the greatest of all time in his sport. So it only makes sense that the greatest welterweight of all time, me, Chaos Covington, goes and dunks my nuts in the middle of RDA's face in the middle of the United Center in Chicago. But aren't you about maybe getting disqualified or fined or something or people saying it's not part of the sport? And the thing is, is, is with chaos, it's unpredictable. Dude. There's no... You can't control chaos. Chaos just happens. So, you know, I, you know, I don't even know what I'm going to do sometimes. It's just, it, I just do it, you know. So I'm not, I'm not, I don't care about repercussions. I don't care what they say. I do whatever I want. That's what a boss does. Now, Dos Anjos is known for having great cardio, great Muay Thai, lots of power, great jiu-jitsu. How are we going to deal with that? Uh, you know, I'm just going to deal with it by... You know, doing what I always do, just go out there and beat their ass. Don't give them a second to breathe. And, you know, he, everybody that's saying he has great cardio, he has all these great things at him, are also going to be the same people that say after I get my hand raised that, oh, he should have been lightweight. Oh, he really didn't have that great of cardio. Oh, he's he was overhyped, this and that. So, you know, all the people saying that, you know, they're all delusional. I can't wait. I can't wait for the fight. Are you going to call out Woodley if you win? Uh, of course. You know, he's next in line. You know, it's... Tyquil, he has nowhere to hide anymore. So, you know, he's got, it, he, I got it back to the corner now. So it, it only, it's only going to be me and Tyquil next. People saying he refuses to say your name. Yeah, of course he refuses to say my name because he knows what comes to saying my name. He doesn't want to open that floodgate. He's been ducking me since last December when the UFC offered the fight for the World Tour Championship. And he let Cyborg get the main event when it should have been me and him. So, uh, you know, he doesn't want to say my name. He knows what comes with saying my name. And, and pretty soon he's going to be, after this weekend, he's going to be begging for my name because I'm going to be his last paycheck so he can pay off all his baby mamas. Well, how many baby, no, come on. He, he has one baby mama. I, I like know the girl. He doesn't have lots of baby You mama. sure about that? You sure you only got one baby mama? I, as far you as know, I know. You might want to do your research, Adam. I think you're a little left. Really? That's Yep, for sure. I, I, don't, I don't spread fake news, Adam. When I say something and I come out, that's the honest truth. I'm not like Tyrone. When Ty- Tyrone goes in the when he, you know it's fake news. He just comes out to say stuff because he wants to get me to talk. When I say stuff, I mean it. It's the truth. So look that up. No, no, no. I mean, the last time you came here, you talked about John Jones doing steroids in college, and that made huge news, by the way. People were, a lot of people were very surprised about that. Uh, but that was crazy. Yeah, man. Your boy, your boy Joe Rogan was talking about it. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. That's another thing. So, you you're you're calling him Taekwon Joe, and then you're gonna slap him. Yeah. In, you're gonna slap him in the octagon. That's not gonna go well. Uh, I don't I don't know what's gonna happen with with Joe. You know, I honestly, I, 
I, I can't control what happens. You know, I don't know. It just I'm unpredictable. I don't. I don't even know what I'm gonna do yet. It just depends on what kind of mood I'm in. But you know, I got I got no ill feelings to Joe. Yeah, I mean, Joe's a fan of yours. I mean, he, he, you know, but yeah, he did listen to that interview and he said, you know, you should be careful because, you know, John Jones might see you and s slap you. And I, I could see why you got upset about that, too, though. Yeah, you know, that, that was a cool thing to say. But, you know, I, got, I guess I, got, I was supposed to, you know, tone it down. I shouldn't be talking about John. I should keep it directed towards the fighters and, and, and everybody else. Right, 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 right. That, 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 that totally makes sense. Uh, so how do you think CM Punk's going to do? Oh, uh, shit, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't think he's going to do well, but they did give him, uh, you know, a little a little patty cake opponent, you know, an easy opponent. So if he can get the job done, that would be great. But he'll definitely sell some pay-per-view, so it'll be good for Whitaker. Now, are you getting part of the pay-per-view points? I wish. Uh, After this fight, they have no choice, though. Yeah, I mean, you should. Yeah, I, I mean, you guys, a lot of people are going to be tuning in because of you and Rafael Dos Anjos. I know I am. I know, man. I, I know I, I know they had to speed the pot for, for Rafael Dos Anjos. So, you know, I know he's getting a little pay-per-view cut because he was, he's been ducking me since Singapore. We supposed to fight last year in Singapore, and he, he wanted nothing to do with my name. So, you know, I know they had to speed the pot for him and give him a little pay-per-view. Now, Bubba Jenkins says that he's been training him in wrestling for you. Any, uh, any thoughts about that? I mean, what's better than a show? I'm like, I don't care how long you, you train wrestling. I've been training since I was six years old in wrestling. So no matter what Bubba tries to teach him, he's not going to help him in the half time. I'm a completely different style wrestler than Bubba is. So you'll see Saturday night. Where it doesn't make a difference. Now, I've, I've, I actually I just talked to Shorty Torres. He says you look great. He says you've been training with Poirier uh, and uh, Masvidal and that you've never looked better. Yeah, man, I put in a phenomenal training camp. You know, as you know, a lot of rounds in the bedroom, so I'm in great cardio shape. You know, I had great training partners, Jorge Monsfort, Dustin Poirier, Tony Martin. We got a great team over at American Top Team, Mike, led by Mike Brown. So, you know, I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm the best I've ever been in my life, and uh, I'm going to go out there and put on a good performance. Hopefully, hopefully uh, Rafi does, doesn't knock himself out. <laughs> now, a lot of people would never do what you do because they would think, Shit, if I lose, everyone's going to be celebrating. Everybody's going to, like, you're putting yourself in a position where a lot of your haters are going to come out of the woodwork if shit doesn't go your way. But you don't give a fuck. You're just like, you're, you're that confident. I'm that confident, man. This is destiny, dude. I've called my shots since day one. I said it a long time ago that I'd be fighting for this belt and I would get that belt. So I've always, I've always lined it up, you know, and at the end of the day, I don't care about what anybody thinks, man. I don't have feelings. So. You know, if people want to come out of the woodwork, keep coming out of the woodwork, man. I don't know who you guys are. I don't care about you. All I care about is me and my journey. So I know this is destiny, and I'm, I'm going to get that, that belt wrapped around my waist on Saturday. I can't wait, man. I mean, you worked your ass off, and, uh, and you're entertaining as fuck. I also recently saw that you tweeted that you're a big Trump guy. When did, when did that happen? Oh, man, I've always won. You know, that's been my campaign, make UFC great again, so... As soon as I found out the odds were released that I was the underdog, you know, I had to think back to our great leader of this free nation, Donald Trump. He was also the underdog in the campaign race. And just like him, he's going to grab these pussies and rule. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, listen, you know, Trump was the underdog, pulled off a major upset. Uh, what's, what are the odds, you and uh, Dos Anjos? I think I was like, uh, like plus... I don't know, plus something, plus 110, plus 120. Got it. Something Got like it. that. I don't know. Now, the weigh-ins. Are you going to start a fight during the weigh-in? Dude, I can't, I can't give away insider, insider <laughs> info on the weigh-ins, man. I got some, some really good stuff planned, so you don't want to miss the weigh-ins. I can't wait, man. I, I, I can't wait. I think that uh, – I, I think you got this. I really do. I really think you got this. I want to see you versus Woodley. According to you, you beat up Woodley in practice. According to Woodley, that never happened. Uh, according to Dean Thomas, you guys wrestled, but he didn't see what happened. So <laughs> I, 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 I want to see it. I mean, how bad did you beat Woodley in practice? Dude, I, fucking, I made him quit one day. One, you're supposed to do five rounds of sparring. After the second round, he's like, no more. I'm done. Right in front of Dean Thomas, right in front of another Muay Thai trainer from L.A. His name's Edmund. 
So Edmund knows too. You can hit up Edmund. And his boxing coach you can hit up too, Jake. He's over at Title Boxing in St. Louis. He's all too, man. I, I don't make up fake lies, fake news. I beat Tyrell Dawson. He knows it. That's why he doesn't want to fight me. I mean, he says that never happened. Uh, he he says, of he, course he does. Yeah, I mean that's. But he said. also said that he also said that he was ready to fight a long time ago. He could fight Nate Diaz and GSP, but as soon as they offered him to fight me, he he has to get a left hip shoulder surgery. So the guy's a complete fake. He's a fraud. I'm gonna send him to the retirement home soon. Now, what are your thoughts on the Diaz brothers? Uh, you know, I don't think they. I don't know. They they, they were warriors in the game. I don't have any disrespect towards them, but you know, I think they're done fighting. You know, Nick has some issues outside of fighting, and and Nate, you know, he's went for that Connor fight, and you know, he's made so much money for the Connor fights so that he, he has no he's, he has no reason to fight over. Now, the Mackenzie Dern uh, missed weight. You called her a fat pig. Uh, I think you put a picture of her next to Porky Pig. Miss Piggy. Miss Piggy. Uh, did you get any flack for that? Why, why did you do that? <laughs> Why did I do that? Because she's fucking parading around with that stupid little accent, that Brazilian accent. She was born in America, raised in America, and she wants to walk around and act like she has an accent in Brazilian. Like, dude, it's so fake. And and then when you miss weight by eight pounds, come on, dude. You, she set herself up, Adam. It's not my fault that she's she looks like Miss Piggy. <laughs> I, I I don't think she's like Miss Piggy, I, but I I I mean I don't see her that I, I can't see the resemblance of her Miss Piggy. Honestly, I, I I gotta say she's a very attractive girl. You wouldn't have you wouldn't hook up with her if she wanted to. <laughs> oh, no, Adam. She doesn't meet my criteria. If you didn't hear the earlier Hawaii show, I said seven and a half and ups only. But shouldn't you be going for tens? I mean, seven and a half is you're, you're you're like kind of uh you know you're not really giving yourself that much credit. Well, seven head, seven half is the bottom of my range. I started ten, so if if it's an off night and like I didn't get any from you know my ten, you know then, then okay maybe we can slide down to seven and a half. But you know, <laughs> consistently going up. Probably after this fight, I'm gonna be at eight, eight and a half. How many girls have you slept with in your life? Oh, too many to count on on a hundred fingers. Like at least probably close to a thousand. Thousand women. Wow. Yeah, easily. It's on par with Will Chamberlain. Yeah. I remember one year in college, it was like I was I was going to all the frat parties, sorority parties at Oregon State University, and I was sleeping with like two girls a night. It was ridiculous. Wow, two girls a night. Um, that's yeah. Now, now your whole thing about nerd bash. I mean, what's wrong with being a nerd? Some of these good people they like science or they like reading. Like, why why well, nerds? Let's first establish who the nerds are. The nerds are all these Cheeto eat dorks. They're in their mom's basement and they want to play Mark Ass Matchmaker on the internet. They haven't done anything with their pathetic lives, Adam. And you know what? Nature used to weed out all these beta nerds. But now I'm the alpha that came to rid the world of the nerds. And the next nerd on my list that's on the guest list is Rafi Dos Nachos, June 9th, live on pay per view. But these aren't, I, I don't think these are nerds. Those are more trolls or like just jerks. I, I mean, nerd, when I think of a nerd, I think of like a kid who's just into science or something, you know, or just like a, somebody that's into, you know, uh, something, you know, a little bit more intellectual. I, so I think maybe dork bash. I don't know what it is, dork. It used to be a different word for bash. Geek? Uh, oh. Well, yeah, uh, virgins, virgins too. You know, I have a lot of haters that are virgins that are little kids that uh, like, are like, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. They never even you know, had their dick rubbed, so, you know, they, they want to be offensive to me and yell things at me and say they could beat me up and this and that, so, you know, that's that's kind of how Nerd Bash got started, because all my haters are virgins. Yeah, but I don't think that, like, first of all, I don't think those guys really think they could beat you up. I mean, no, people know they, <laughs> they can't really beat you up. Uh, but They but, say it on the internet, that's why, that's why I had to start Nerd Bash, because they'd be saying some crazy things on the internet, like, like they're going to do something to you. No, no, no I, I'm, I'm rooting for you, I remember when you're my friend, but also, like, you're after you win, I want to see what happens. Like, I, you're definitely... Because <laughs> I can't... Yeah. I'm looking forward to how far you're going to take this. Uh, what you're going to do. Are you going to call out Joe Rogan? Or are you going to take over? Are you going to give a kid a wedgie in the middle of the octagon? Are you really going to tee back? I don't really think if you win, you're going to whip out your balls and put it in Rafael Desanio's mouth. I just don't think that's going to happen. I mean, someone's going to grab you. I mean, do you really think that that's going to happen? For real? Dude, I, honestly, I, I don't know what's going to happen. It just depends on what kind of mood I'm in that day. But I'm telling you, I think chaos is exactly how I am. You cannot control chaos. 
chaos just actually just goes out and does whatever it wants. You know, you it's unpredictable, and you know we'll see how it feels Saturday night. But that I got some crazy shit planned, fireworks. So you don't want to miss it. I hope you got pay per view. Where's the after party? The after party is probably going to be at the Marriott. That's where the fighter host hotel is. And then uh, you know I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna figure out somewhere. Go to a bar or something after that. Now, I got like 50 people coming out from Oregon, a bunch of chicks, you know, the porn convention, the girls are going to be lingering around, so it's going to be a good time. Now, what do your mom and dad think when you're making these videos with all these porn stars? Oh, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a boss, man. I do what I want. You know, I don't care what my mom and dad think. You know, they can think whatever they want. You know, I'm, I'm my own man, but I do whatever I want with my life, so no one tells me what to do, man. You know, the last person that tried to tell me what to do was my manager, Dan Lambert, had to slap me in the face. Well, that, that sounds like a really good uh, career move. But I'm just saying that, like, if I'm your parents, right, and I'm, you know, you went to Oregon State, you're a smart guy, you're a fighter, and now I see you with these girls that you could click on their links and just loads of cocks are around them. I, I mean, aren't they say, Colby, meet a nice girl, maybe it's time to settle down? That's the thing, man. I'm a bad guy, man. I'm just, I'm the super villain that came to life in the UFC, you know? So, but the thing is, is news slash bad guys win in real, in real life. Yeah, well, listen, uh, we're, we're, you know, we're rooting for you. I, I, I can't wait to Saturday night, you versus Rafael Dos Anjos. Thanks for calling in, Kobe. You're the best. Appreciate it, man. Much love, Adam. Much love to you. Take care. Take care, brother. This, this is Colby Covington. What's this up? Is Adam Hunter. This is Adam Hunter. How are you, man? I'm talking to the champ. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, bro. How are you? Good. Congrats on uh, throwing the first pitch out. I mean, did you ever think that was going to happen in your life, throwing the first pitch? Uh, of course I, I expected it. You know, I'm a great, the great American winning machine. So, you know, <laughs> America loves winners. And that's why I went out to the Miami uh, Stadium to throw out the first pitch and celebrate being a winner and a world champion. Did you throw a strike or what? Damn right. I threw that right down the center, man. I, You know, I had a... I had a big uh, critiquer, you know, the guy that was catching the ball was my former high school and middle school buddies. So, you know, he's like one of the starting pitchers for the Marlins, and then Dan Straley. So, you know, I couldn't let him down, man. I had to throw it right down the middle. That's awesome, man. Well, well, congratulations. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy for you. And, c and congrats on, the, on, like, the big win. You're now the champion of the world. I mean, did you, how good does it feel to be champion of the world? Oh, it feels good, but it just there's so much unfinished business that I have left, you know, just proving each and every doubter wrong from the beginning is what this plan's been, and this is just a big slap in the face. It's going down as labeled as the snowflake Armageddon. <laughs> it's where all the nerd tears are coming out, all the haters and virgins, they're just sad at home with their tissues, so it's a great feeling to be a UFC world champion. But I think a lot of people are jumping on the bandwagon too, right? You notice that also? A lot of people now are finally coming around. Yeah, people are coming around. They're realizing that, uh, you know, I support America. You know, I stand for a bigger cause now. And, you know, I, I'm using my platform to relay the message about being proud of being American, being proud to, you know, have President Trump be the leader of the free nation. So, you know, I think a lot of people are coming around and realizing that, that you know, I'm doing good for America and, you know, I'm, I'm being a good role model. I, I did notice that Donald Trump Jr. commented on your Instagram. Uh, how do you know him? Uh, yeah, we kind of got in touch with him through a guy named Cameron Haynes, my friend. You know, he kind of put out a, a picture of me with the UFC belt after I won on Saturday night in Chicago. And Donald Trump kind of messaged him and was talking to him a little bit. So, you know, I, that was a connection I got through my buddy Cameron Haynes. Now, let's talk about that fight. Did that fight go exactly as you saw? it? Because I remember you came on the podcast a week before. You said you were going to knock him out and teabag him in the middle of the octagon. That didn't happen. Uh, you did win. Uh, I think you won all five rounds, but you didn't knock him out and teabag him. Yeah, I had a, I had an off night, man. But, you know, I did do something that I said I was going to do, and that's what I was going to be great, like Michael Jordan. The thing about Chicago is all their sports teams suck. The Bulls suck. The Cubs suck. Uh, the Blackhawks suck. The Bears suck. So, you know, they're not going to see a world championship for at least another hundred years. So, you know, they should be thankful that they had greatness in the building. Colby Chaos Covington, UFC world champion. Did, was, uh, was RDA tougher than expected? No, he was everything I thought he was going to be. He was definitely the second best fighter in the division. You know, he was my toughest, 
challenge and toughest opposition. You know, he's very well-rounded, but, you know, he, he's the second best fighter for the reason. I've separated myself that I'm the best fighter in the world, and it's a large gap in between. Well, I mean, definitely, I mean, you proved a lot of people wrong. A lot of people were crowning you out. Uh, and in fact, like Bisbing and Karen Bryant, I remember after the show, you, you went on Fox Sports and you got into it with Bisbing. What happened there? Yeah, me and Bisbing got into it. He's, he's trying to ruin my moment. He was being unprofessional. He's supposed to sit behind that Fox desk and be unbiased. But, you know, he got his little nerd tears feelings hurt. So, you know, he's just another nerd. You know, he's a little one-eyed idiot. Come Michael on. Bisping, I mean, he, you know, he's just mad that his coach, Jason Perillo, you know, he got his ass beat, and he, he had to eat his words. He was talking all the big game before I fought, and then, you know, I went out there and did my thing and got my hand raised, and he was all he was all butthurt about it. So, Michael Michael Bisping needs to know his role. He's a retired ex, you know, middleweight. He's a bum. You know, he got beat up by two welterweights in a row back to back right now. So he's retired with his little one eye. You know, he, he's not even on my level. So I don't know why he's trying to pipe up to me. Kobe Bisping is a world champion. He knocked out Luke Rockhold. I mean, he's an Ultimate Fighter winner. He's a UFC Hall of Famer. I mean, come on. I mean, he, he also got one of the, one, the biggest flukes in UFC history against Luke Rockhold. He got, he got KO'd unconscious, flatlined by American forefather Dan Henderson. He should realize you don't mess with the red, white, and blue, man. That's what happens. What happened when he fought Dan Henderson. So, you know, he had a subpar record. His record wasn't that great. You know, yeah, he got a lucky fluke world championship, but before that, he was just a gatekeeper at best. So, you know, the, the guy's a bum, dude. I don't know what, why he's trying to talk. He's, all, he's trying to talk all hard. Dude, you're retired, dude. Come out of retirement if you're so tough. Well, I, well he did say that he would beat you. I mean, do you, do you think you would beat him in a fight? Dude, it wouldn't even be competitive. He just got destroyed by two welterweights in a row. Two welterweights in a row that aren't even on my level. He just got beat up by GSP. That guy's way past his time. The guy's old. He's washed up just like this thing. You know, it wouldn't even be competitive, dude. I mean, honestly, it would be, I'd have to give him like a handicap, give him like, give him two rounds to, to start in a five round fight. I'll just, here, two, the first two rounds you can give him, I'll give it to you. Put it down on the scorecards. But the other three rounds, I mean, he's not going to last three rounds, so it wouldn't even be competitive. Wait, you think you could beat GSP? I could easily beat that syrup sucker, man. I bury him right where he stands. GSP is not on my level, man. His, his skills, you, you, they're not going to translate against a guy like me. You know, what he tries to do, I'm a different level wrestler. I don't get held down. I've never been held down. And I'm a different volume striker than he's ever faced. You know, my pace alone would break him. You know, but he knows that. He's too old now. You know, he's going to stay in Canada and suck on his syrup over there. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Kelvin, Kelvin Gaslam's a good fighter, though. I mean, he's one of the, he's one of the best in the world. Kevin's a, he's, he's a great fighter. You think you could beat Kelvin? It wouldn't even be, it wouldn't even, I mean, he, listen, he's listening to, he's losing to guys like Neil Magny. Neil Magny is like nine or 10 in the division. You know, you saw what happened to Neil Magny when he fought RDA. RDA fucking submitted him in like a minute. It wasn't even competitive. So, you know, I don't know why you're talking about all the peasants. The thing is, is I'm the puppet master and these are all my puppets. <laughs> now, thinking about a guy that you're going to have to fight, Tyron Woodley, he's furious. He said he may have to, he may actually murder you in the octagon. And he also said that you wouldn't let la- uh, that 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 is and he's he's now that you you woke up a sleeping giant. Now you're not concerned at all about about his his power. Not concerned one bit, man. Look at his power. He throws 25 punches in a five round fight. I mean, the guy just is coming off the worst title fight in the history of the UFC. He got a record. His only record that's ever going to go down in the UFC for least strikes thrown in a fight. It's pathetic. The guy can't do anything. He has no gas. He's mentally weak. He mentally breaks. I felt it one-on-one, firsthand at American Top Team. It, the guy's a joke, dude. He's trying to get himself hyped up for something that he's going to fail so hard. And when he fails so hard and I get the, the belt and retire his ass, he's going to be on a therapist's couch, man. You're going to have to check that guy. He's going to be on suicide watch. But you're not worried about it. I mean, the guy knocks. I mean, he knocked out Jay Haran. He knocked out Josh Koscheck. I mean, he knocked the actor out. He knocked an actor out. No one knows who that guy is. Who he knocked out, Josh Kostak. The guy was already retired. GSP retired Josh Kostak. His face was already a mess. He had his orbital broke, crashed too many times. And he's coming off a knockout loss to Lawler before that fight. So those fights, you know, they're not very impressive to me. Look at his last string of fights. You know, he's a little older now. He's slowed down. He doesn't have the same work ethic. Work ethic. Look at his face. He's a little fat, man. He doesn't want to show his little muffin top he's got going on. You know, the, Tyrell Woodley's old. He's at the end of his career. His time has come and gone. My time is now, Adam. I, I got to say, man, the fact that you, I talked to you on Tuesday before I fucked up the audio. Sorry about that. You, 
Um, you were back in the gym on Tuesday. You won the title on Saturday. You took Sunday off, I assume. Were you back on Monday morning? I, I, I actually stayed in Chicago. I was banging Midwest Freaks all weekend, so I wasn't able to get back to Florida and American Top Team until Tuesday. You know, I had my little victory tour, all my Midwest Freaks, after I beat up that Brazilian geek RDA. So I got back to the gym. I'm actually outside, standing outside American Top Team as we speak. Wow. I mean, that's dedication. I don't know many people that can win the fight, uh, the, the, the belt on Saturday and be back on Tuesday working their asses off. I mean, that, that just shows how good, maybe that's the secret of your, of your success as far as cardio and everything else. Um, let's talk about some of those, Brazilian, those, uh, those porn stars. The porn convention was in town over the weekend. You win the fight that night. What do you do? I win the fight. I go straight back to my room and I have a threesome with two different porn stars. I'm on the porn star diet right now. That's how my cardio is so good, man. I go all night. I don't get tired ever. So, you know, I, they, they want to take pictures with the bell. They wanted to get naked and put them around their tits. And we had a good time, man. One of them wanted me to fuck her doggy style while I had the belt on. So and Did you? Did you bang her doggy style with the belt on? Of course I did, bro. And, and I, I was like, why do you keep looking back? Damn, am I that good looking? I'm like, I know I'm good looking, but she, she kept looking at the belt. So, so what does that belt smell like right now? Oh, I mean, it still smells like leather, man. Oh, okay. It's good. That's... You know, I, I, went, I took it, you know, right to the, I got it washed the next day. Got a little spit shine. Boom, boom. Got the, the gold back looking good. The diamonds fresh. So, you know, I, I definitely, it's sanitary for the next chick that wants to get down. Now, aren't you concerned a little bit about herpes or genital warts or anything for some of these girls? Yeah, of course, dude. That's why I wrap up, man. Like, come on, I'm not stupid. Dude. Okay, you wear. A con- I mean, not just not just those girls. Any girls could have herpes. Actually, a lot of times, porn girls are cleaner because they get tested every every week. So, uh, a lot of times, those girls are actually the cleanest girls are, are out, out there. So, uh, I hear you. Yeah, you're right. Now, are, are you looking to have a, a girlfriend or find the one or just threesomes every night? Oh, uh, you know, definitely. You know, I, I'd love to settle down. You know. I'd love to find the one, but dude, man, chicks, man, there's so much drama, man. They just take out the way from your focus. So, yes. you know, I don't even want to give that time and energy up to a girl right now. You, you see how focused I am on fighting in my future. That's all I care about, man, is defending my belt and being the best and greatest fighter of all time. That's all I care about. I eat, live, and breathe this. 365 days a year, Adam. I'm 24-7. I'm that type of guy, man. So I'll sacrifice a girl for my world championship and all that stuff. I don't, I don't care about a girl. If I find a, a good girl and a unicorn comes along that fits me perfect, great, man. I would love to, to share my life with her and be faithful to her because that's the type of person I am. But, you know, until then, you know, I'm just going to focus on my money and, and my career. Well, your sister is like a dancer for a basketball team. Don't you have any friends, hot, hot dancer friends? Yeah, she tried to hook me up with some of her friends. She used to be a cheerleader for the Sacramento Kings and the Florida Ice Hockey Panthers. So she's got some hot friends down in L.A., so i got to make a trip out to L.A. I'll come see you. You're in L.A., right? Yes. Oh, perfect. She lives near L.A., so I'm going to come down there, see a couple of her friends, hang out, boom, boom, come by the <laughs> studio, say what's up to my boy Adam. I love it. Be fun. I, I love it. I love it. I'd be, I'd, be, I'd be honored. Now, Matt, Sarah, what happened with you and him? I mean, there's not really anything that happened with us. He's just trying to pop up, pipe up to the king. The thing is, I mean, he's a one-hit wonder. He's losing a 10-8 battle right now to diabetes, and he wants to come at the UFC welterweight king, Colby Cass Covington. It just makes no sense. He's just looking for headlines. You know, the guy's a joke. He's a little squirt. You know, like, he's got a 50-50 record. What is he, 10-10 and or something like that? Come on, bro. You couldn't hold my jock strap, man. Let's, let's be honest. Let's be real, man. You have a better shot to hit the power ball than talking about me <laughs> anything to do with fighting. So, you know, the guy needs to worry about his fight with diabetes, man. He's looking but, a little fat. But he, he said if there was a street fight, fight, if there was a street fight, he would be the one to leave and you'd be the one knocked out. Oh, wow. That real original, man. <laughs> did, did, he have, did he come out with that? How long did it take him to come up with that fucking cool ass story? Like, come on, dude. The guy's a joke, man. He, he, he was losing to Shoney Carter on the fucking... Back in the old days, dude, the guy, what is he, 50? How old is he, man? Like, he's on, he, he, like, he's up there. I mean, he's definitely not in his prime, but uh, what, what happened? I, he, I feel bad for him. What happened? He, he, what, he, like, did those guys set you up? They had Usman come out or something, or something crazy happened? I don't even know, man. Like, they, he, you know, he's just been trying. The thing about Sarah is he's just looking to get, you know, some sound bites out of me. He's looking, you know, me, for me to reply back to him and 
so his podcast can take off the ground. His podcast sucks. No one cares about it, man. No one wants to listen to that old fart fucking talk, you know? Like, so he's just looking for, you know, clickbait. He's trying to get me engaged. And, dude, he, honestly, I have not, you hear me how I am. I'm not, I'm not hyped up about it. It is what it is, man. I right. got bigger fish to fry and more money to make, so I'm not worried about little bald-headed uh, twerp fucking Matt Sarah. Now, one, one, of my favorite, one, of, one of my favorite stories about you, Colby, is I heard it from Ben Askren. He was coaching his boy against you in college. You were beating up on his, his, his student, his, his athlete, and then you got into Ben Askren's face. Like, you want some of this next? But he was the coach. I, I, I've never heard of a wrestler ever doing that. Uh, it was crazy. But that, that made me really think that, like, man, this dude, I mean, at that time, he was an Olympian. And you were like, fuck it. I, even though he's not even on the team, I will still wrestle Ben Askren right now. Yeah, because I knew where my level was. I, I was on the Olympic. I was good enough to be on the Olympic ladder at that moment. Like it wasn't. It wasn't like he was way ahead of me in the gap of wrestling. You know, I was one of the best wrestlers in the Division One at that time. So, you know, all the D one champs always go on and be the Olympic guys. So, you know, I, I didn't care about Ben Askren, man. If he wanted to wrestle, dude, we could have wrestled, man. He wasn't gonna fucking intimidate me, dude. No, no. He says if he fought you, it wouldn't be competitive. Honestly, dude, I feel bad for that guy, Adam. The fact that he's still trying to keep this fail of a career going, like, of course he's going to try and try and bite some lip off to the UFC king, you know? I mean, dude, no one cares about him, dude. He's boring. He doesn't sell. Like, he can't, he can't break an egg. Let's be honest. The guy had a guy in Bellator and Mount for 25 minutes. The guy didn't even look like he had a scratch after the fight. I think Korsh or something. I mean, dude, the guy's... He's not, he's not at that level. But he, he, look, he was say, he's 17 and 0. He'd be there. He was a Bellator champion, the 1FC champion, the two time national champion. Padded record, 17 0, a bunch of uh, snowflakes, a padded record, a bunch of little nerds. You know what I mean? The guy, the guy never fought anybody, you know, to be honest. Uh, well, he had never fought. I mean, he, he, he did beat Jay Haran. It was very disputed. Some people thought Jay won. It was, it was a close fight. Who the fuck, who the fuck is Jay Haran? You keep saying this name like people know who he is, Adam. Come on, let's be real, dude. No one knows who fucked. Jay Haran is or she, did you say Jay, Chevron? Jay was a great Chevron? fighter. He was a great fighter. He was just a little ahead of his time. Uh, great wrestler as well. So, all right. So we so we fight Tyron Woodley. Let's say you beat Tyron in MSG. I think that's. I, I talked to Danny yesterday. He 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 liked the idea of it. You fight Tyron Woodley in MSG. Then what do you do? Do you call out Conor McGregor? You have to see, man. Definitely. You know, I got my eye on Conor and GSC. Both those two. They both intrigued me. So, you know, I got my eye on him. I, I think that little uh, coked-up leprechaun might have something to say as well. He's talked about getting a third belt at welterweight. So, you know, this is all chatter. You know, let's see if he puts his mouth where his money is. Have so, you ever even been rocked in a fight? You, have I ever been rocked? Yeah. Not even close. Never never rocked in a fight. Never rocked in training. Never, dude. I'm, I'm the most flawless fighter in the game. Least hit. Never do my... I got an iron chin anyway. So, you know, no one's even came close to fucking rocking me. And what uh, belt are you in jiu-jitsu? I'm a super black belt. They gave me, like, the super black belt. They, they didn't want to give me a belt because I'm so above the belt. You know, the belt is all a joke. You know, the thing, it's like a Ponzi scheme, man. Just, it's just a money laundering system for people to get money. Oh, it's about respect, you know. But these are also the same people that are going and cheating on their wives, having infidelity in, in the MMA gyms, uh, cheating on their taxes, just piece of shit type people. So, you know, those fundamentals of martial arts and the respect, it's all bullshit, man. It's all, it's all a hoax, man. So, but how do you do against, like, the black belts at ATT in jiu-jitsu practice? Oh, I submit every single one of them. I'm the, I'm the best fucking uh, jiu-jitsu grappler at the gym. Hands down, it's not even competitive. No one's even on my level. Dude, they sent me to a Fila Grappling World Championship my first year out of college, and, like, no American won it. And they sent me, I was the only American that won it, won the Fila Grappling against a bunch of black belts. And this is, like, my first year training jiu-jitsu. Now I've been at American Top Team for eight years now. I've been training with the best in the world. I'm a completely different level now. So, you know, I'm, if I went to ADC, I would easily win. It wouldn't even be competitive. Really? Like, I mean, what about, really? what, about, what, about what about against guys like Gary Tonin or, or like some of those guys? That guy sucks, dude. He got, he got submitted by Shoe Face with a flying triangle. I, I, I train with Shoe Face every day, Carl DeSapodil Jr. That's one of my main training partners. So, I mean, how would, you do it, how would you do it in a grappling match against, like, Dylan Dennis? Oh, who the fuck's that? I don't even know who that is. He's, like, he's, he's Conor McGregor's jiu-jitsu coach. He's in Bellator. He's supposed to be, like, world-renowned under Marcelo Garcia, black belt. Supposed to be a really good guy. 
Uh, I, I don't follow I don't follow Bellator, and I and I definitely don't follow Conor McGregor's coaches. I could give a fuck less, to be honest. So, do you honestly think if you went to uh, Abu Dhabi right now, you'd win the whole thing? It wouldn't even be, it wouldn't even be a question. I wouldn't have to train with for it. It would be easy as fuck, man. I guarantee it. And then and you could ask most of the people that train with me. Ask shoot face. Ask them if I'd win it, dude. I win that shit easy, dude. Last time the ADC champ came to American Top Team, Rodolfo Vieira, I broke that dude in like a minute. He got into one scramble. I, I literally was in mount the whole night. He couldn't get me off him. Rodolfo Vieira, look it up. He's so, like, damn, Colby, you're on another level, man. So if I ask Hector Lombard, he'll say the same thing? I never, yeah, I mean, he would probably say the same thing. I would hope he did. We've never really trained together, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People say you got to watch out for him. He'll say the same thing. Definitely Hector will say the same thing. He knows how good my grappling is. No one can stop my grappling. Wow. I love it. I love it. Well, listen. And the, truth is, the thing is, the truth hurts the snowflakes, man. That's why this is their bash 2018. And no. I'm making the UFC great again, man. Well, listen, you're backing up everything. Now, when do you officially go to the White House? Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure yet. You know, we got to wait. We got to wait and see, you know. Uh, listen, keep it up, Colby. Be careful. Don't let any of these girls put holes in their condoms or anything. To, you know, I don't want you to see you having kids or any, right now. You got to be focused one day, yeah. all right? So be on the lookout. I like that. You know, God bless America. God bless America. Colby, thank you for everything, and keep doing what you're doing. Do it for the troops, baby. America. Absolutely. Yeah. Take care, brother. Traps on some trap, don't some trap. Tunis on the hook, jump, don't pull down. Tavas told them, don't pull 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 them,